it was such an amazing experience. When I walked in and I had the vision, because I bought a new bass for the album actually. I went from, you know, from the old album, from, from the first album, my, you know, more kind of like soft rock kind of thing. I had a, had a Fender Precision, but then um, I went and bought myself a Music Man for, um, for this album. And had this vision to kind of like um, to have the sound that I wanted, kind of like a more industrial kind of like a bass sound. And I, we went in first day. He sat down with us. He he said, right, <clears throat> what what do your instruments want to sound like on this album? And I take a lot of influence from kind of like early kind of like um, emo uh, punk rock kind of thing. So I was like, I was like, you know, um, I was like showed him Streetcar um, by Funeral for a Friend, that middle bit with just that clangy kind of like Music Man classic bass sound. And he was like, right, got it. And I plugged in my bass and everything and he got the sound perfect. He got the sound just right and I absolutely loved every moment of it. And he got the sound that I wanted and he listens to me and when I made a mistake he was like right let's go back let's just not put too much pressure on you let's just keep going and you know it's you know this album probably one of the is, is the highest kind of um, uh, uh, um, money we've paid for the album and you know we got every penny worth of this album and playing, the, you know, having an honour to play the bass on this album is just incredible. And, <clears throat> you know, there were days where, you know, by the time I got to start to play the bass, we were all really kind of like, kind of midweek, kind of, you know, day day two or three. And we were already getting quite tired and quite, you know, we, the excitement kind of like caught, got on to kind of pressure to kind of like, right, we've got five days to do this album we got to get this right but it just made so much ease just from the guy's supports and the support from neil our producer engineer you know i had you know he absolutely nailed everything we wanted Yeah. You're actually recording. Yeah. Well, Tom's a bassist, obviously, and yeah. And other than being the scapegoat for most of the jokes, and you know, he, he does tend to be the butt of the jokes for outbound practice as well. Um, he, he generally gets in, and his role was just stay solid, and he carries on, and he didn't really come into any problems. I found with Tom, he he got in there, and he was pretty much one take wonder all the way through the the week and you know I c cannot really complain at anything that he was doing other than so sometimes he you know when he was playing I'd fall asleep so I don't know if that was on him or if that was just me being a bit tired but you know <laughs> he's uh no he Tom did very well I'm very proud of him for his his work Tom is kind of like a Christmas elf <laughs> he's just jolly happy nothing bring me down all the time um he's always just full of enthusiasm like he just opened up a big present um he's always like come out with ideas and checking and saying oh i, I want to do this bit here what do you think of this or um you know maybe i'll change this to this what do you think yeah you know, he's always doing things like that to sort of try and make um the, the song whatever it is he's working on better and then he goes away and practices it like crazy. So when it comes to his days, you know, in the recordings, he just went from one into the next, into the next, into the next, real quick. Um, it didn't take many takes for him at all to get it okay. right. Yeah, yeah. Already, yeah. well, I'll turn the bass up. You start with that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Off. Here we go. Yeah. 
Robert Ian song with the song that sounded much better, just sounded clean. Yeah. 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 Try to take the look and see what happens. So it, so it hits in with the, with the drums as well. Because it's no different from what it's playing. It's just that sort of playing less. That's all it is. Can you try it? No harm in trying. Of course. Yeah. Good. Good. How about your song? Have you? What's the song? Dance playing drums. Dance playing drums. Oh, yeah. Dance playing drums. I heard this song. Probably naked. Oh, dance playing drums. Dance playing drums. Dance playing drums. I have no drums. words. He's probably <laughs> on drugs. <laughs> and on that probably. Note, I'm gonna go grab me a drink. Yeah, on that note, I probably Tom, have a share. On that note, give up. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't give up. Just, just do better. <laughs> I grew up kind of like. <clears throat> more of a punk rock kind of. Uh, you can tell probably from my bass style during from the album. But the right. If I can go into the writing process. It was, it was, it, this album was more complicated, kind of, it was more kind of fiddly and it kind of pushed me to my limits and kind of made me a better bass player. Uh, we, going into the recordings, you know, it's fine playing it live because if you fluff up, you know, no one's really going to know. But when you're going into the recordings, everything has to be perfect on time and uh, to the point. So when it came to the recordings, it was kind of a bit more of a pressure to kind of get things in time and in right. And with me as a bass player, I wanted to get I, I wanted to get things. You know, we paid we paid a lot. Of, we paid money. This is you know, as I said before, this was kind of you know this was this was the this is kind of the next stage this is kind of like high end and it it was it was the pressure and the toughness of of getting it right and you know you know think about alien you know alien alien is probably the most complicated kind of technical song we do have on the album now alien was was a challenge in itself and you know you got that middle bit that kind of kind of goes off goes off tempo and but the guys and neil kind of showed me a way and kind of pointed me in the right direction to get it right and now i can just hit that every time during practice or during shows so you know the challenges were there but the experience and everything else in in within that recording session kind of shows you the light and kind of showed you this is how it's meant to be played and this is easier than you think and i'll be forever grateful for that because that for me has just made me a better musician person and everything yeah tom have a try with that that other that alternate rhythm mm. um john will probably be able to explain it a bit better than i was trying to explain yeah yes like, we could try it and just see uh, if it Dun, dun, dun. I'm not saying dun, dun. it should be right, but it'd be cool to have the option and be like, yeah. oh, what sort of sounds. Oh well, yeah, if we, if we do it and then... then it don't work, it don't work. Yeah. It's much easier to hear it when it's recorded than it is to sort of hear it just on... You mean, you mean stop so the notes, not let it ring? Ba -ba -ba -ba. So you do know, you let it ring out. Yeah, so it's like... But it makes no sense, because... Bum, bum, bum. So you yeah, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dun, so dun, 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 I suppose actually. Try it. Try it, man. It's a Which section is it? In the in the lead line. 
I see what you're saying, but I don't. I don't know. We'll dun, try it. But dun 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 dun. Which section? It's for the, the main riff. Yeah. The intro. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that. <laughs> Here we go. Just try. Dun 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> so at one point, Dan had this idea um, to change something very slight in what Tom was playing. And I could see what Dan was saying, but because of the amount of effort Tom had put in, the amount of practice he'd put into what it was he was playing, it made it very difficult for him to sort of see where Dan was coming from and to try and change what he was playing. It made it very hard for him to envision it. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, what Tom was playing wasn't wrong. It was just something... Dan felt like, oh, let's give it a go and see if it works. But we kind of ended up taking away the adage of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And what Tom was playing wasn't wrong and sounded sounded great anyway. So um, we just pushed on and, you know, decided to fill the time with other things because <laughs> there was a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, play less. No, no. So I curb. Dun, 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 dun. So it's like, dun, dun. You're letting the sort of like note ring out a little bit. Rather longer. than doing the up note. Just try it. I mean, no. Do it like that little tiny space. Yeah, but it's meant to be. Yeah, but we're not going about what it's meant to be. We're trying something new on it, aren't we? Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, you can. Because I, I don't understand what. You can. Dun, 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 dun. No, du dun dun. Yeah. Dun 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 the tensions were a little bit high because obviously you know we all wanted we all wanted to make this album perfect and you know we wanted to get everything right and obviously Dan Try Dan. Dan had a point of trying to make a certain rhythm differently than I'm more comfortable with, and obviously Neil being the being being, being a bass player himself because he was part of Oxygen Thief. Um, he uh, he made me feel kind of more res um, not respected, but. Um, He he reassured me that I was doing everything right. Yeah, fair enough. You know, we wanted to make everything kind of perfect, and we um, and we, you know, everyone's allowed their input and all that. Um, but you know, it was it was frustrating at the time. It was probably the one time I kind of nearly had a you know kind of had to take a breather from <clears throat> from the. Um, from the experience, from from the recording, because you know, it, you know, with the pressure of recording and having this input kind of like being told at you, but you can't, you can't make sense of it. And you know, it was, it's probably the one time that we during this recording we did nearly butt butt heads together. The situation resolved itself because you know, because yeah, because it does, you know. But it was it was probably one time during that recording that it was a bit tough. Tiny little breath in between. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. This is one note you're playing early, so it's like dun 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 dun. dun. Just try that. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I think it sticks to that. <laughs> sticks to the original one. If it works, it works. Yeah. Um, I, love I know what you're saying. I know yeah. what you're saying. I just if if, it, if you can't do it, yeah, it doesn't really matter, does it? No, not really. I think I it mean, sounds pretty good as it is. Sometimes it's hard enough for Tom to understand what I'm going on about in the best of times. Um, so me trying to explain to him without words, using an instrument that I'm not. I'm not a bassist, so I'm there mimicking playing bass and trying to get him to hear what it is that I'm imagining in my head. And he's just looking at me like a, like a duck across the water, just going, what are you? And I'm just there going, no, 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 try this, try this. And eventually it ended up being a, uh, a lesson for me where I had to learn how to uh, 
ask politely, <laughs> which, uh, you know, we all learn something new. <laughs> and if it is just like moving a note. Yeah. Because it's literally where that yeah. hat is. Yeah. I do like a little open hat. Well, um, and it's uh, it's basically following your kick. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Because you, I know you just doing it as you. Yeah. As you're saying, um, I can hear you playing. Let it. me do. Let me do it in the edit if it needs doing. Because I don't, don't think it's worth. Spending yeah, no, I know. I think for that, yeah. Um, but a valid point. Yeah. Will be addressed. <laughs> uh, should we do some? You don't listen to me enough. Today, that's then. what it is. Sure. And then all this so, one will need is vocals. Right? Yeah. That's true. Cool. Smash. Yeah, does, that, does the parts that lead into... I think there is your comfortable. Uh, do, 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 um, from, the, from the verse, of course, does that sound all right? Because I always feel like I'm a bit, I'm rushing to that note. Um, yeah, I'll check it. Yeah. From where to where? Cool. It's so, like from the verse into the... Um, chorus. Uh, not chorus, the, um, the second... Because it's like dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's after the first verse. In between recordings, um, there was this room where you could go and chill out, and in in there we we discuss ideas for the next few days and plan out what we're going to do and maybe try and come up with some new ideas to add in or you know, you know just be a bit more creative and use the time as effectively as we could. Um, but there was also this dartboard and we had this bet going uh, which was the last person to get a bullseye had to pay for all the drinks on the last night and uh, well the first person to get it happened to be Tom <laughs> and then Dan happened to be the second person because I kind of started forgetting about the game which was bad because it meant the last night um, it was up to me to, to sort out the, the after party um, so you can kind of imagine how things went on that last night. <laughs> Miss. Miss. <gasps> yes! Fuck off. Did you? Fucking bastard. Just about. Oh, right. That means Tom's safe. <laughs> Tom so Tom safe. doesn't have to worry about buying the beers. It's up to me and yet Dan now. Fuck. We're in the midst of kind of like a semi lockdown, so you know, we got permission, we did our tests. Um, there was some kind of thing where recording studios could still be open during that time, so um, there wasn't really much to do during that side in Portsmouth. Um, we you know, where we had a um, um, uh, the Tesco's next to our hotel and McDonald's, uh, John bought a PS1 to um to 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 the hotel so we spent most of the time kind of like hanging each other hanging in that in john's room playing ps1 having some drinks you know just to kind of like it was really quite a downtime because obviously the pressure during the recording times was quite quite high so it was kind of like nice just to get in there decompress and you know just enjoy ourselves and prepare ourselves for the next day <laughs> <laughs> I got my own guy. <laughs> yeah, that mole <old> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your kid. I think Princess Gay has the holy hand grenade. Or twice. 